Okay, as we continue our talk on ratios and proportions, we're going to be looking at interpreting graphs of proportional relationships. So you pretty much have all the tools that you need to um, be able to do this. So again, we're just going to continue with um, applying what we know and just kind of uh, honing our skills on ratio and proportions and what it means to be proportional. So for this first example, um, it's a review of what is previously taught, but this lesson is going to build upon um, this example, just combining everything together. So on your lesson worksheet, uh, read the question and create the and complete the table that shows at least three ratios that are equivalent to the problem and answer the questions that refer to the table and unit rate. So you have uh, three things to answer. Once you are done with that, go ahead and continue the uh, video and check your answers to the first three questions. All right, so for example one about grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe, um, you should have a table that uh, you're creating based on uh, for four dozen cookies, you have three cups of flour. So once you make a table showing flour, which is in cups, and cookies, which is in dozen, you would have something that says three cups to four dozen cookies, six cups would be to eight dozen cookies, 12 cups would be to 16 dozen cookies, or so on and so forth. All right, then the second question is the number of cookies proportional. How do you know? Um, your answer would be yes, because there's a constant. If you have, if you end up with four dozen cookies, it's going to use three cups of flour, so that would be a ratio of four to three. So you could either have four to three, or if you want to turn it into one and one third, that's totally acceptable also. So the measure of cups of flour multiplied by the constant gives the corresponding measure uh, or amount of cookies. And then for a unit rate, if it is four to three or one and one third, then that would be our unit rate. Uh, and the meaning is that we would have one and one third dozen cookies, which is about 16 cookies for one cup of flour. All right, now that you've done that, go ahead and complete the graph, the next set of questions. So completing the graph and answering the questions about the graph and the equation, go ahead and try that and then go ahead and continue the video and check your answers. All right, so this is what you should have. Graphing the relationship, you should have uh, as your x-axis the flour by cups and your y-axis is how many uh, dozen cookies or how many dozens of cookies you're going to have. So our dependent variable is our cups of flour and our independent variable is the dozens of cookies. So um, for the second question, does the graph show uh, the two quantities being proportional? And the answer is yes, because it goes through the origin, which is 0, 0. And then for an equation, write an equation that can be used to represent the relationship. Again, dozens of cookies is dependent on uh, on how many uh, cups of flour we have. So since it, you could either have four thirds times F, or in this case they have one and one thirds uh, times F, and they even wrote it as a decimal, which is three repeating. And again, don't forget to quantify your symbols. D is representing the dozens of cookies, and F is representing the cups of flours, or if you used any other uh, symbols, make sure you quantify what those symbols are standing for. All right, so take a look at example two um, on the lesson worksheet. Go ahead and use the graph to answer questions A through C. Um, once you are done answering questions A through C, go ahead and continue the video so we can discuss the answers. All right, so for A through C, it says record the coordinates of the flower at the points from the graph in the table. What do they represent? Again, you have uh, some 
coordinates you could pick was 0, comma, 0. And that is representing that for 0 cups of sugar, you're going to have 0 dozen cookies. 2 cups of sugar would give you 3 dozen cookies. 4 cups of sugar would give you 6 dozen cookies, so on and so forth. Uh, for the second part, Grandma has one remaining cup of sugar, so how many cookies will she be able to make? Well, if uh, two cups will give you three dozen cookies, then that means one cup would give you one and a half dozen cookies. And it says to plot the point on the graph, so it should be at the coordinate one comma one and a half. And for the last question, how many dozen cookies can she make if she has no sugar? Sounds like a silly question, but in essence it goes to the fact that it is proportional because if you have no sugar, then obviously you can't make any cookies. All right, so this discussion, go ahead and just summarize any key points that um, make sense to you in your math journal. But it's going to be kind of a ask a question and then the answer. So how is the unit rate related to the graph? And again, you want to try to come up with your own answer because these are questions that will be asked on the test or on the standardized test. And so you'll, you want to practice coming up with your own answer before you check to see how your answer compares to my answer. So again, how is the unit rate related to the graph? Well, the unit rate must be the value of the y-coordinate of the point on the graph which has an x-coordinate of 1. So the unit rate is always in the form of 1 comma r. Or if you're looking for the ratio, again it's y over x and x being 1. So what quantity is measured along the horizontal axis? So that would be our x-axis. And the answer to that question would be the sugar, okay? And the sugar is, again, in cups. And when you plot the ordered pair, A comma B, what does the A represent? And your answer would be the amount of sugar in cups, again. And what quantity is measured along the vertical axis, or the y-axis? And you would answer that the amount of cookies, and again, it matters that they are in dozens, because that is the unit rate that we're, or that is the label or the quantity that we are measuring it by. So when you plot the point A comma B, what does the B represent? Again, it represents the total amount of cookies, and again, in dozens. So now that you have that, again asking the question, what is the unit rate for this proportional relationship? And the answer is 1.5 is the unit rate, or 1.5. So if you're starting at the origin, if you move one unit along the horizontal axis, how far would you have to move vertically to reach the line you graphed? And you would have to move up from the horizontal axis, you'd have to move up 1.5 units in order to get to the um, proportional line. So why are we always moving 1.5 units vertically? So again, if you move over another one on the horizontal axis, what are you going to be moving again as you go from 1 to 2? Well, it's because our unit rate is one and a half dozen cookies for every one cup of sugar. So the vertical axis, or the y value, represents the number of cookies. And since the unit rate is one and a half, every vertical move would equal the unit rate of one and a half units, which is going to be one and a half times more cookies. So if you continue moving one unit at a time along the horizontal axis, what distance vertically do you move? And again, this is just asking the same question in a different way, but you are always going to be moving one and a half units up vertically. So does this number look familiar? Is, the is it the unit rate? Do you think this will always be the case whenever two quantities 
that are proportional are graphed? And you should have said, yes, the vertical distance is the same as the unit rate. So the vertical distance will always be equal to the unit rate when moving one unit horizontally on the x or on the m um, on the axis. So the length or the distance of the line is always going to increase by one and a half. So graphs of different proportional relationships have different points, but what point must be on every graph of a proportional relationship? And explain why. So not just this particular graph that we're talking about, but any graph, what is one point that is consistently on any graph that is a proportional relationship? Well, you always have the point 1, comma, the r unit rate, R being the unit rate, because the unit rate describes a change in the vertical distance for every one unit of change in the horizontal axis. You might have also answered that the point zero, zero is also um, part of any proportional relationship that would be correct also. But what we're looking for is the tie-in to the unit rate. So every proportional graph has a unit rate. All right, so now we're to our exercises. Go ahead and complete the exercises on the worksheet. Check your answers when you are done. And again, as you're checking your answers, write any questions you have and bring them to class so we can discuss them. So go ahead and stop the video, start working on the exercises, and then when you're done, go ahead and uh, check your answers. All right, so let's go ahead and check your answers. Make sure you pay attention to the way uh, the answers are written in a sentence, complete sentences. You want to get used to that um, because when you are tested, especially on the, um, the standardized tests, they're going to look for answers in complete sentences. So for A, it's asking, can you tell that this is a proportional graph? Uh, again, because it goes through the origin, it would have to be proportional and it is a straight line. And then answering part B, it's a two-part question, so each answer is, pertains to each part of the question, and then an application. All right, for D, E, and F, I'm asking you to identify the unit rate. And again, if, the, if one of the points, they picked 15 comma 5, you could have picked any other point. But when you set that up as a ratio, it is one to three, so one third. And then uh, for F, you are writing an equation. Again, they used M for minutes and G for gallons. If you're using X and Y, just make sure you um, quantify your symbols to, you know, to tell what you are representing. In this case, they do M for minutes and G for gallons. If you do Y for minutes and X for gallons, that's fine, just make sure you state it. All right, for the last set of questions, um, asking if the cost is proportional. Um, again, make sure you practice your explanations. It doesn't have to sound exactly like this, uh, this particular answer, but you just have to have the important parts. Talking about a constant, which is 50, and uh, what it means, what that constant means. Then for C and D, sketch a graph to represent the relationship. And to finish up, what points must be on a graph? Again, the origin needs to be on it. And the unit rate, which in this case is 1, 50. And then again, explain what that means. What does 0, 0 mean? And what does 1, 50 mean? And then uh, asking about the point, 5, 250, what does that mean? And how does that apply to the, or using the equation to um, justify the answer of 250? All right, so our closing or summary, what points are always on the graph of two quantities that are proportional to each other? You should have two points, the origin at 0, 0, and the unit rate, 1, r, 
are always going to be on a graph of a proportional relationship. And how can you use the unit rate to create a table, equation, or graph of a relationship of two quantities? Well, you can either multiply the x value by the constant to get the y value, or if you have the y value, you can divide by the um, unit rate to get the x value. And again, looking on a graph, looking for the points, uh, the origin and 1 comma r will always tell you what the unit rate is. All right, we will see you in class. Well, that was a little premature. Uh, we're not quite done yet. There is one more slide left. And that is, how can you identify the unit rate from a table, equation, or graph? And that is from a table you can divide each y value by the corresponding x value. That gives us a ratio of y over x, and that can also be the unit rate. And once you find that unit rate, you can plug it back into the equation in the form of y equals kx, where k is your unit rate. And again, it will help you create that point of 1 comma r that represents your unit rate. All right, now we're done, and <laughs> we'll see you in class.